Welcome to Missouri 2021 Presents, all about art for the Missouri Bicentennial. I'm Beth Pike, your host for this hour, as we take a look at the collaborative and creative projects happening all over the state to commemorate Missouri's 200th birthday of statehood. Whether you're an artist or someone who enjoys art, you know that the creativity in our state is alive and well, even during a pandemic. In fact, art has a way of healing us and gives us a sign of hope during difficult times. And I hope you found creative expressions in each of your own lives. With us to share in this art experience for the next hour are our panelists, Amelia Nelson of the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art and John Knutson of the St. Louis Public Library, who have joined forces with the Kansas City Art Institute to create the Missouri Remembers Project, documenting Missouri artists over a 130 year period beginning in 1821. And we'll talk with Jill Sullivan of Post Art Library in Joplin about contemporary artists involved in a new exhibition titled Missouri Art Now, featuring the works from Missouri, current Missouri artists, and that's going to be traveling to parts of the state soon. And finally, we'll hear from Cape Girardeau artists Barb Bailey and Aaron Horrell, who came up with the concept and have carried out the creation of the Missouri Bicentennial Mural that has been painted on by over 11,000 Missourians. But before we get to our panelists, just a reminder that we will not be able to see or hear you on camera, but we will make time for some of your questions at the end of the program. All you have to do is type in your question and where you see the button for the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. You can type anytime and we'll open it up for questions after we hear from our presenters. And we're also giving away a few bicentennial themed items before we sign off. So please stick around for that as well. Now, many of you may be aware of a statewide poster contest that's been held to commemorate the Missouri Bicentennial. Judges have decided upon the winners of the poster contest that was open to students in elementary through high school. So Michael Sweeney is here on the program to give us a brief update on the winning designs and our official commemorative posters for 2021. So we had a total, really a great turnout over the course of, of 2020. Uh, the Missouri Bicentennial Poster Competition was put together by the Missouri Bicentennial Commission. Um, it was open to third through 12th graders. Uh, we received over 200 entries uh, for consideration from over 45 different counties across the state. Um, in the last, uh, the end of, of 2020, the judging committees picked their final uh, four selections, two from the elementary grades and two from the secondary grades, so seven through 12th. Um, and those four designs have been revealed. Uh, for the uh, younger grades, Luke Esner uh, from Monroe County in sixth grade uh, with the, uh, the poster there on the left. And Lahua Lee uh, Talua, uh, sixth grade from Jackson County um, is over there on, on the right. Um, be a foot uh, from 11th grade, Cape Girardeau County, I believe Jackson High School uh, is where she is from, um, is one of the, the older grades. And then Ingrid Keene uh, from Monotaw County, ninth grader um, that was sponsored by the Price James Library there in Tipton. Uh, these are the four winning designs and we're very excited to be working with Hallmark Creative Marketing Studios that's going to take these designs and give them sort of their final look. Uh, our goal over in the next month is to actually have poster reveal um, ceremonies for kids across these kids across the state, but also then to make these these designs freely downloadable for people who want to use them um, in their own bicentennial commemorations, either for events or just to have them in the home. They will be available uh, for your use. Uh, so we're very glad we were able to get so many kids involved in thinking about Missouri's past, present, and future um, and sharing those stories. One other quick project I want to mention to you, art related, um, is the Missouri Art Educators Association has put together, to the, together a Best of Missouri coloring book. Um, this will be kind of going on throughout the course of 2021, uh, available to kindergarten through 12th grade. The students are asked to create a coloring page with black and white drawing. Um, and we'll have each page, will have the student's name and school and grade level and uh, the historical explanation of what is what is in the in the drawing. Um, you can find out more information about this on our website in the process for uh, submitting that. Um, so I hope you, if you know some, some young enterprising uh, artists, I hope you will consider that. So anyway, I'm gonna turn it back over to Beth so we can, we can hear from our panelists. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Michael. And we'd like to introduce our first guest, uh, please welcome Amelia Nelson, Head of Library and Archives at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, and John Knudsen, a professional architect and scholar based in St. Louis, who's doing research at the St. Louis Public Library for Missouri Remember Remembers, a free online resource that documents the artists who lived in or spent part of their careers within Missouri from the years 1821 to 1951. 
Amelia, what can you and John tell us about this project and why you chose this time span? Thank you, Beth. I am going to share my screen here. Um, so uh, I can say the entire group who is working on this project was very excited to be able to um, share information on Missouri artists. Um, as Beth mentioned, this is a project that we're hoping to launch this year. Um, it's going to be freely available for anybody who wants to learn about Missouri artists. and. Um, we had a few different reasons that we wanted to um, highlight Missouri artists. First off, right now, it's difficult to find information on Missouri artists. If you're specifically interested in um, a, a local artist, you have to re reference um, a patchwork of reference materials. So there's not one source that looks at Missouri artists. Um, we also wanted to be able to document Missouri's artistic heritage through individual artists as part of the state's bicentennial. We wanted people to be able to make personal connections to artists who may have practiced in their community. And then we also want to highlight the institutions that have materials that document these artists' careers. Um, we have several goals with this project. Um, we want to create a resource that celebrates Missouri's artistic culture by documenting the state's artists, but also the organizations and the exhibitions that they participated in um, from statehood in 1821 through 1951. We want to include artists from across the state, um, as well as from underrepresented communities, including women, artists of color and self-taught artists. And we want to create a resource that responds to the needs of a di diverse research audience, including scholars, art enthusiasts, and students. And then we definitely want to create a portal that encourages discovery and connections between the artists who are in the portal, but also the organizations and the institutions um, that they were part of. This is a collaborative initiative. We're very excited to be a, an endorsed project of the Missouri Bicentennial Commission. There are three institutions um, who are making this project happen, the Kansas City Art Institute, the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, and the St. Louis Public Library. And all three of these institutions have come together um, to mine their collections that document local artists. And many of these collections have been maintained and um, developed over decades. So this is an amazing opportunity to be able to share these resources with a wider community. Um, we have made it this far in the project because of the generous support of um, two grants that we've received. We received funding for the planning phase of our project um, from the Missouri Humanities Council. And currently we're in the implementation phase and we have um, received a very generous grant from the NEH that's funding us um, in this phase of our work. This is our project team, and I wish I had more time to tell you about how great this team is. Um, this includes project supervisors from each of our um, partner institutions, our research interns, our technical consultants, IT liaisons, and even museum volunteers who have helped um, with this project. We also have an advisory board. Um, our advisory three panel advisory board includes Madeline Rislow, Carmeletta Williams, and Stephanie Knapp. And this expert panel has been invaluable in helping us think about our procedures, the artists who should be included, and also how people um, in different communities are going to be able to use this resource. Um, so the next few slides I'm very excited about because they are our wireframes. So these are the stage before the actual beta portal, but they show us um, what we will be able to do with this resource when it launches. So um, when you come to the, the um, portal for the first time, you'll encounter this page. And this page allows you to um, initially search for an artist um, by time period. Um, and I should say at any point, you can also search for an artist by their name and, and go directly to an entry on that artist. But if you're interested in discovering, for example, 
artists who may have practiced in Missouri during the Civil War, you can adjust these bars um, to that time period and automatically these visualizations that you see below here will update to show you when artists, where artists were practicing um, in the state during the Civil War, what medium they were practicing in, and also the organizations that were active during that time period. And because we're prioritizing discovery, any of these organizations that you're interested in learning about, you can click on and it will take you to what we're calling a landing page. And landing pages are really in the vocabulary of our portal. They are exhibitions, um, artist colonies, institutions that um, have artists who contributed to them throughout um, the time period that we're examining. In addition to telling you about these institutions or exhibitions, it also, in our portal, you'll be able to see the artists who participated in these institutions and organizations. So um, any of the artists that you are interested in learning more about, you can click on, and that takes you to um, the artist entries. These entries include um, what we call tombstone information, the basic information about where an artist was born, where they practiced, but it also gives you biographical information. If we can find photos, we're including them um, here. And um, you'll also be able to discover awards, exhibitions that that artist may have received, relationships that they had with other artists, with institutions, and you'll be able to connect to um, our resources that we used in, in discovering um, and researching this artist. So the institution who has files or the, the institutions that have files on this artist, as well as our, um, the resources that our researchers consulted when learning about this artist. Um, and these uh, discovering artists uh, that have practiced in Missouri has been one of the most exciting parts of pulling this project together. And so I'm very excited to hand it over to um, John Knutson, who is our one of the project research um, interns at the St. Louis Public Library so that he can share, us a, share information about one of the artists who he has researched. As Amelia mentioned, I'm the research intern at the St. Louis Public Library. So essentially it's my role to collect all of this and, and document all of this information on these various artists. So today um, I'm going to share just one of our many, many different artists um, and hopefully give you an idea of the research process that we're engaging and the kind of information uh, that we're finding. So the artist I'll be talking about is Frederick C. Alston. He was a black painter born in Wilmington, North Carolina in 1895 um, and studied at a number of uh, institutions and schools across the country before landing in St. Louis. Um, he was originally trained in design and architectural rendering at the Detroit Institute of Lettering, um, which is near and dear to my heart as an architect. Um, and then later studied at Shaw University and the Philadelphia School of Industrial Arts where he studied painting with the artist uh, Thornton Oakley. Um, uh, Alston was really active though in St. Louis um, throughout the 1930s. Um, and the interesting point of connection with our own institution um, is the series of exhibitions that he participated in um, in the early 1930s with the Urban League of, um, of uh, St. Louis, which hosted their annual art exhibition at the St. Louis Public Library, which you can see an image of our building here um, at the bottom of the slide. Um, so just sort of an interesting um, that kind of direct connection to, to our institution. Um, and here you can see on the left, just an image to give you an idea of the type of work that Alston did, um, these sort of industrial and urban uh, cityscapes. Um, he was a painter, so they're all, you know, um, oil paintings um, mostly. But apart from his artwork, Alston was really known as an educator. Um, so before he moved to St. Louis, he began teaching at the Tuskegee Institute um, in 1922. And then when he relocated to St. Louis in 1929, he became the art director at Sumner High School, uh, which is a really important institution as the first high school for African-American students west of the Mississippi River. So um, here I've highlighted 
Alston in red, um, and you can see him with the rest of the Sumner faculty. Um, but what we're finding in our research is how really important Alston was in sort of training a younger generation of Black artists who really became prominent in the St. Louis art community. Um, so if you might be able to imagine around this time period, information on um, especially Black artists is, is kind of uh, not well documented, a little bit difficult to come by. So um, we've kind of gotten creative in some of our, our sources that we're using in our uh, research. Um, and one tool that we found really useful are actually uh, yearbooks. We have a number of yearbooks um, in our holdings at the library. Um, and so here you can see an excerpt from the 1930 Sumner High School yearbook um, where you can see uh, Alston's bi um, bio. Um, here is an image of him with the Dexterity Art Club uh, that he was a sponsor of. Um, and what's interesting about this photograph is um, I, we haven't identified them, but um, there are two other artists, Spencer Banks and Archie Dumas, um, who were involved in this club as well um, and are in this photograph. Um, so this is really where we get to start to piece together the kind of relationships um, that these artists had with one another. And then uh, next slide, if you wouldn't mind. Um, and then these are just, uh, just a couple of snapshots of some other um, sort of bits that we find uh, as we're going through these artist files. Um, newspaper clippings, um, a lot of exhibition catalogs and membership lists um, that are really helpful in filling in those gaps where, um, you know, we might, uh, we might not have that information in um, some of the, you know, anthologies or um, published work. Um, these are really helpful in kind of connecting those dots. And I think that's one of the kind of most interesting outcomes of the project is piecing together how these artists work together, what their community was like and, and, what the, and how they interacted with one another at that time. So hopefully this uh, gives you just a little bit of a taste of our project and our research um, and, and to these uh, Missouri artists. So thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I, we also um, have a page on the museum's website um, where you can ask us questions and, and get a little bit more information. Um, and if you just Google Missouri Remembers, you should be able to find that. Thank you very much. Well, this is just phenomenal. The first time I've seen it, <laughs> just hearing about it over the months, the uh, past year or so, oh, just phenomenal. What a, what a resource. Um, if you could, uh, can, can, will you be adding on to it or, or are you going to just stick with these artists these years? What's the plans for possibly adding to it? So um, we will launch the project um, it, with the information that has been contributed by our three partner institutions this year during the bicentennial. And then the next phase of the project will be to open it up to other institutions throughout the state who we know also have um, records on Missouri artists. So that's going to be the second phase. And yes, it will be an ongoing project that we hope to um, get richer and richer um, as we get more and more content added. We did have a question about it that I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in now while we're talking about it. Uh, Joe Barnes is joining us and he asked us the criteria for artists include architects and musicians. Um, so we are, we did have to, to make some decisions about um, the, the scope. Missouri has amazing um, creative community. So we're focusing on the visual arts um, and not including architects, unfortunately. Um, but uh, so just the visual artists and I'm happy to provide a little bit more information if there are um, additional questions. And then again, tell our um, audience where they can see this um, and uh, you know, any other information you'd like to pass on before we go to our next segment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, uh, what I showed you are wireframes. So they're mock-ups. We um, hope to have our beta portal that we can start doing some user studies and some testing on um, to see how our data looks in the actual live portal in the next week or two. And we hope to roll it out um, at, before our actual bicentennial date, but definitely this year in 2021. And when we have it available, we'll make it available on um, all of our partner institutions website. We'll definitely share it um, at, at, with everyone who we can. 
And of course we will with Missouri 2021 as well. We'll keep everybody updated on our website and our socials. So, well, I'm so excited about it and, and congratulations, kudos to you for just a wonderful, outstanding work. And please pass that on to your huge team that helped put this together. So please let, let them know, we really appreciate their effort. Definitely yes. well. So as we know, great artists are not always in our past, but they're also among the present. And with us to talk about contemporary artists in Missouri and a juried exhibition that will be making its way to parts of the state is Jill Sullivan. Jill is the executive director of Post Art Library in Joplin, which is among the sponsors of Missouri Art Now, an exhibition featuring 60 works from artists in Missouri. Uh, Jill, thank you so much for joining us this hour. I know a call for art was sent out last year and you've been preparing for the exhibit, uh, which is going to be get in March and continue through November. Yeah. So tell us more about the sponsors and how you went about the selection project. Okay. So first, I would just like to, on behalf of the Missouri Art Now team, I would like to thank Missouri 2021 for the opportunity to speak to everyone today. And I would also like to thank everyone for joining us this morning, for taking the time out of your day to learn about the arts happenings for the bicentennial. So with that being said, welcome to the Missouri Art Now portion of the program, Missouri Art Now, a bicentennial celebration. So a little bit of background information on this project is uh, that when Michael Sweeney was making his way around the state of Missouri, which it feels like a really long time ago, like going to all the libraries and cultural organizations and institutions and just kind of coordinating and brainstorming with everyone, we came up with this idea that to have an art exhibit for the bicentennial. And so he did what he does really well. He coordinated and put me in touch with people and other people in touch with other people. And we started meeting back in 2019, I think it was, to plan this. And so here we are now. But what is Missouri Art Now? So Missouri Art Now is a call for entry based competition that was juried among the four corners of Missouri. And I'll explain what that is here in a moment. And the idea was to spotlight what artists are doing in Missouri now and to just sort of showcase our vibrant visual arts culture as we celebrate the bicentennial. And so this traveling exhibition is comprised of 60 works of art from 60 different artists whose artistry stood out among hundreds of others. We, I believe we had uh, 387, so nearly 400 artworks were entered to be considered for the show. And of those 60 were chosen. So our partners for this exhibit are Post Art Library and Spiva Center for the Arts here in Joplin, Missouri. And then the Arts Council of Southeast Missouri in Cape Girardeau, Hannibal Arts Council in Hannibal, and the Alvarez Kemper Museum of Art in St. Joseph. And this is endorsed by Missouri 2021. And we thank you for that. Uh, and I like this quote here on the screen. I won't read the whole thing to you, but I think it really sums up the idea behind Missouri art now. And that is while the Missouri Bicentennial calls attention to celebrated artists of our past, such as Bingham and Benton, it should also draw attention to our current visual arts culture. And so we wanted, we liked this idea of, sh of showing that Missouri continues to be a site of exciting artistic production. So that's why we chose Missouri Art Now, which you will hear me say many times in the next few minutes. So how did we go about doing this? Well, uh, a lot of talking led us to decide to arrange Missouri's counties into four different corners, if you will. The idea being that the anchor organization or organizations, as is the case here in Joplin, in each zone would be responsible for choosing which artists represented their zones, because we thought, who knows the work of artists better in each zone than the people living and working in those zones daily. So we took that approach rather than having a statewide panel uh, make the decisions. So we put out a call for artists with callforentry.org because, and we put out one single call. And then after we the call closed, we arranged it all. So each zone just received what was pertinent to their zone. And although I cannot speak for the process in the other zones here in Southwest Missouri, what we decided to do was to put together a panel of seven people from different areas of our zone. So it's, it was not just Joplin people who um, made, made the decisions. So 
I will would like to show you a preview of what you can expect in the show. But before I get into that, I would like to say many, many talented artists submitted work for the call for entry. We had work submitted from well-established artists, emerging artists. So it was a really diverse pool to, to choose from. And it, it was really interesting to see that variety come in from across the entire st state of Missouri. So the, I'm going to show you two pieces from each zone, but I want to say that I picked them like sort of randomly. I, I really would love to share the, the whole show, but I also would like for you to come see the exhibit when it's traveling around. So I'll, we'll save all that for later. So from the red zone, these are two pieces, uh, Bovine Nocturne by John Keeling of Kansas City, and then Large Bull by Victoria Watkins of Maryville just to give you an idea of where some of these artists are coming from. And then for the green zone, which is Northeast Missouri, we have Evolved, which is made of walnut by Michael Bauermeister of Augusta, and then Black Matters by C.B. Adams of St. Charles. And then for our blue zone, we have Copper Treasure by Steve Dorr of Joplin, which is made of wood. And then we have Madonna and Child by Chelsea Murphy of Ozark, which is graphite and charcoal on paper. I guess I should pause a little more so you can see them. And then for the purple zone, which is Southeast Missouri, uh, we have Bison Hunt by Brian Haynes of Washington, which is acrylic on canvas. And we have Forest Spirits by Shelby Moe of Rala, which is film photography. So this just gives you an idea of some things you can expect. We have plenty of, I mean, we have a good combination of 3D and 2D. Um, we have the, the artists from each zone um, the amount of artists chosen from each zone is in ratio to the amount of artists who submitted from each zone. So we really did our best to try to make sure it was fair and really representative of the state of Missouri as a whole instead of just one area or region. So where you can see this artwork, uh, here's our exhibition schedule. It starts in March and it will travel throughout the year ending in November 7th. And we chose to have five shows instead of four because we didn't want the folks in central Missouri to have to drive very far to, to see the show. So it'll be in Cape Girardeau, March 5th through 27th at the Arts Council of Southeast Missouri, then at the Center for Missouri Studies in Columbia, April 9th through May 15th, Spiva Center for the Arts here in Joplin, May 29th through July 17th, in Hannibal at the Hannibal Arts Council, July 24th through September 4th, and then at the Albrecht Kemper Museum of Art in St. Joseph, September 18th through November 7th. And I will say that tentative receptions are planned at some of the venues, but it all really depends on the COVID situation at the time. So if you're interested in attending one of those, I would just suggest um, perhaps you could follow us all on social media and learn more information that way. <laughs> And I think that's all I have for today. Again, thank you for the opportunity. And I hope that you're able to make it out to a show. And if you're not comfortable being around people, I, we're working on some sort of virtual version of it. So everyone will have access to it. Well, that's fantastic. Um, Jill, will the art be for sale for purchase? That's a really good question. So we will not be, the artwork, it's not that it won't be for sale. It just won't be for sale through the galleries and the places they're being shown. Um, we decided to do it that way. One, because it's traveling and it, it, it would just be like complicated to manage. Um, but if anyone's interested in any of the pieces, they can request a price list. And so, and then they'll be put in touch with the artist and they can purchase the artwork from the artist directly. Great. We had a question about what about Central Missouri and Jeff City, but it, it's going to be at the Center for Missouri Studies, mm -hmm. State Historical Society, right. Columbia. So if you're in Jeff right. City, you got a half hour drive. Right. <laughs> so. And those artists, I mean, there are artists from that area of Missouri because we divided Missouri into quadrants. So those artists are represented. And Right. And is there admission to see the exhibit? No. Um, I know it's free here in Joplin. That's a that's a great question. I'm assuming it's free everywhere else. 
Um, and since that's not something we talked about, I would assume so. But if you can always email me your contact information or message me and I can get back with you, but I'm pretty confident in saying no. Okay. And I know for sure it will be free at the State Historical Society. In fact, our art gallery is free for people who haven't been by to see our own art gallery. It's a wonderful place to see. Um, now, the virtuals, uh, somebody did ask, uh, Chris asked, when will the virtual show be available? So do you have any idea when that might, might be available? We do not at this time. We're still working on it, but we will definitely get word out every way that we can as soon as it is. Okay, fantastic. Wonderful. Well, I know, um, Jill, that I'm very much looking forward to it coming here at the, to the State Historical Society where I work here in Columbia uh, and have a chance to view the art from around the state. I know one of the exciting aspects of the many art-related projects for the Bicentennial is seeing art from professional and amateur artists of all ages. And, and one of those projects that has been happening for a few years now has involved more than 11,000 Missouri painters uh, on the Bicentennial mural. So Best of Missouri Hands artists Aaron Horrell and Barb Bailey, they came up with the idea to have a statewide mural that would be painted on from all parts of the state and would represent the symbols of Missouri. With some assistance from the Cape Girardeau Convention and Visitors Bureau, Barb and Aaron's dream began to take shape as 15 panels, four by six feet each, would start as a blank canvas and eventually Missourians of all ages would have a chance to paint their small triangle on a canvas. Barb and Aaron, thank you for being here. Just how close are we to seeing the mural completed? Thank you so much. And I really want to say thank you to Michael Sweeney for uh, actually having uh, visited Cape Girardeau and put an ar article in the Southeast Missourian newspaper. And that's where uh, Barb and I uh, saw this and the wheels start turning. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I asked Barb if she thought we could possibly do something like this. And she said, why not? And so I thought, well, she's, she says, why not? We're going to do it. <laughs> so. The thing is uh, about this, uh, I am um, an artist, a self-taught artist. I've been painting for nearly 50 years. Uh, not very widely known, I don't suppose, maybe more widely than I think. I'm not sure now. Yeah, I um, think so. <laughs> uh, but uh, artists tend to be very independent, and I am not so much so. I like to include other people in my work, and this started several years ago. Um, it ended up with Barb and I uh, beginning to paint together about six years ago, probably. And this allows this. We did not know this. I did not have any clue this was going to happen this way, uh, but it allowed this to happen. And uh, because it just seems right to me to include other people in, in my artwork and to get people from various walks of life uh, who don't even think they ever would ever have a chance to paint on anything this uh, magnificent. They have the chance. Children, older folks, uh, people with illnesses, people who have Parkinson's disease, people people who are nearly blind, who can't hardly see, uh, people who, who are so nervous when they paint, their hand just shakes. Uh, I help them or Barb will help them. It's, uh, it's been absolutely fantastic to pull this together and make it work. It's something that could not have happened in the past because of the logistics of traveling with uh, a panel. These panels are aluminum composite, uh, which makes them lightweight. And we can carry them in a pickup truck and take them to all parts of the, the state. So I've said so much, Barbara, you need to say something. <laughs> yes, and to answer your question, Beth, we, we just finished the 11th panel, so we have four left to finish of the 15th. And we are traveling. Our, last year, of course, because of COVID, all our events were canceled, uh, but we do have three events coming up in the next month or so. Tomorrow, we're visiting Bernie School District. Next month, we're going to Jefferson City one more time because our, the 4th of July was canceled last year, and then uh, Poplar Bluff Middle School. And then whatever needs to be finished, Aaron and I will finish up here in the gallery. While we're working on it, people are more than welcome to come by the gallery. There's still time, but they need to come in pretty quick. Um, as you can see on the close-up, the, the small triangles that you get to paint, um, 
So it's kind of like a paint by number in some ways where there's an outline and that for people like myself, who's a little nervous, <laughs> I can have some, uh, an outline to, to uh, stay within. Um, and then of course the great seal is uh, coming together. That's right. Tell us about this. Uh, this is the catfish, right? Channel catfish is the state game fish. And I think that's designated because of the, the fact that it's uh, farm pond raised. And uh, it's also uh, a, a, a fish that we eat in restaurants in, um, in, in Missouri, you know, probably more channel catfish than any other fish. I'm not sure that it's raised here. I made here. a lot of Missouri it's, catfish. Yeah, it's <laughs> yes. fish. And it's good. <laughs> and uh, this looks like that's a dinosaur. Right. Yeah, this is uh, Missouri Hypsobema, I think it is called. Yes. <laughs> and the, this diet, parts of the bones were found in, uh, uh, was it Allen, Glen Allen? Glen Allen. Allen. Uh, close to uh, Marble Hill, Missouri, here in southeast Missouri, and uh, was designated as Missouri State Dinosaur. So I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, and of course, we got the grapes indicating our wine country. Yes. Yes. Norton grape. Yeah, the and uh, or the uh, the St. Louis Arch. This this is one that is very interesting right now. We took this uh, to Farmington uh, Lincoln Elementary Elementary School, or middle school. Middle school. Uh, and anyway, the children painted the arch. Some of the teachers painted on the arch. Also, as we were finishing up, I realized that the arch has not been designated as a state uh, symbol. Uh, I put it on, had it put on the panel because it balanced with the uh, state capitol building so well uh, with this, what law building they call it here. The, oh, that's the courthouse. The courthouse in uh, in St. Louis. It's uh, not directly under the arch, but close. And uh, so that matched very well. But I asked the art teacher if she would contact her congressman and see if there was a way they could get the arch as designated as the state monument. And she did. And the last I heard from her was about a month ago, maybe. And she said that it's uh, it's all a go. It's going to happen. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, not, not official yet, but it will happen. So because of this project, that will happen. I think that's just cool. That's really cool. And I love the bright red, very vivid on this one. This one is the Fox Trotter horse. It's the yeah. uh, state, state's uh, horse symbol. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent, excellent. And it's just uh, over 11,000 Missourians and it looks like you're going to, we're probably gonna have an entry into the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, that's, that's in the process, but it looks like that's probably gonna happen. Wow, that's that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> we did not know that would happen when we started this, but found out later. And this this is such a great uh, Christmas or not Christmas gift, but a birthday gift to the state of Missouri for its 200th birthday. And so many children, we've had so so many children take part in this. And in the future, uh, I can't imagine them being any more proud to be from Missouri than to have this be again a book of world records piece of artwork. Very and valuable. I think, um, Barb, do you have a, a, a small image of all of the of the mural itself <laughs> you can maybe hold up? This is what it's going to be at the very end. Uh, these are just photo composites, obviously, but that's kind of gives everybody the idea of how it will all look, all, although it will be painted and far more beautiful. <laughs> As we finish painting this, we're having a professional photographer take photographs of each panel and uh, he will stitch them together and uh, then we'll be able to create replicas of the finished painted pieces uh, and we'll make them available to people who want them. They can contact the Painted Wren Art Gallery or, you know, get in touch with us some way, somehow, and uh, we'll make them various different sizes. Other, either of you ever worked on a large mural of this scale? I mean, or is this kind of a first thing time uh, yes, project? Yes, we have. Uh, if you look at our uh, screen, you can see the blue across the top. If we were able to take this uh, panel away, which maybe we can if you want us to, uh, we, could, we could slide this 
dogwood panel aside, and you can see one that we're working on for the VFW Hall in Chaffee, Missouri, uh, at the moment. It's a lake. Uh, we'll go your way, Mark. That's lovely. That's My favorite time of year, too, in autumn. That's just beautiful. Yeah, this this is uh, an area, lake close to Chaffee, Missouri, which is where I'm from. And this this will be put on the wall. It'll be 19 feet by five feet tall. So there's two panels, actually. This is just a part of it that you see here. So and we're hoping to continue doing this sort of thing in the future, too. Yeah. We paint together very well. <laughs> Barb paints there, I paint here, and then we go back and forth over each other and it turns out looking like one person did it. So very amazing. amazing. You, you two are really in sync to be able to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. I know you've met a lot of people along the way as you brought the mural to different parts of the state. What was the common reaction you had um, when people had a chance to paint on the mural? Were they nervous? Were they, you know, what, what, what was the reaction you got kind of maybe before and after they painted? Yeah, we did have a lot of people that were nervous. We always, on other projects we've done, people say, oh, I can't paint it. You don't want me to touch it. And we tell them it's okay. We, we're not looking for artists. We want anybody to paint. doesn't matter your ability. Um, we just want to bring a bunch of people together. So it's, we, and like you said, we have met a lot of interesting people around the state. It's, it's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it a lot. A lot of people will walk up and, uh, and and look at it before they paint and just wonder whether they can or not. And either Barb or I will give them the paint on the brush, give them a little brush. We have a couple little brushes that uh, ought to go with this. Whenever, <laughs> if there's anything done. left of they're the They're wearing brush. out. <laughs> they're wearing out. And their tiny brushes doing this great big 12 feet by 30 feet mural. So it's amazing. But a lot of people will say when they're finished, Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is so amazing. One little girl could not talk. She's 11, I think mm -hmm. now. And uh, she thanked me like that, you know, going like that to her, to her chest. And I asked her mother what that meant. And she said, she said, thank you. So I, And Jocelyn, we had an older lady that she was afraid to paint. She was going to mess it up. There was no way. And I kept telling her, oh, but it's, it's easy. It's not hard. I'll show you where to paint. You don't have to do anything. Just touch the paint brush to the triangle. She went ahead and painted her whole triangle and she thanked me for making her do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we tell everybody you're famous. You're setting a world record as you paint each and each individual person now for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, 5,000 was the Guinness record until this came along. And now for over a year, we've been telling everybody you're setting the new record. You're setting the new record. <laughs> so it's, it's a thrill. It really is. And we, we will have, I don't want to go away without mentioning this, we will have uh, a reveal on the 4th of July in Cape Girardeau at the arena building where the uh, the SEMO University or SEMO District, District Fair takes place. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to be um, the first time that people will get to see these panels. They won't be put together. They will be lined up along the walls and but it'll be the first place they will get to see them and we're hoping to have uh someone represent mark twain uh, daniel boone um uh, various uh famous missourians uh, yeah truman th different people the lady who made the missouri flag uh maybe one of her family members can can represent her uh we're hoping to have all that Plus, we'll have Jerry Ford, which a lot of people across the state know Jerry Ford with his orchestra. He will be playing uh, at least part of the time. And we're hoping the lieutenant governor will be here to speak. And that will be in the afternoon. We're planning for it to be from noon until 8. So if anybody wants to come and have a last chance to get a photograph of where you painted the panel as it looks finished, uh, along with maybe Daniel Boone standing beside you. <laughs> I'm going to do Excellent. that. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, I know some questions are coming in, so I want to get to the to some of our questions um, from our audience. Uh, but real quickly, wh where will this end up um, once this painting is this mural is finished? Uh, is are there plans for where it will stay and remain where others can see it? 
Yes, as far as we know right now, it's going to be put up in the Truman Building. Um, I know when we, when we were in Jefferson City last year, the Lieutenant Governor said he had some people maybe looking for a permanent place. And if we can't find anything better, I guess is a, is a word, that, uh, that they have a wall space big enough to handle this mural when it's all put up. And that's in Jefferson oh. City. Jefferson Public City. office so people could come in and, and see it. That sounds also, fantastic. Uh, Beth, we're, take, we're keeping track of uh, everybody who paints. We're keeping track of their name, their age, their job, and their hometown where they live. And uh, that's relevant. So many women say, oh, you don't want my age. You know, I'm 60 or whatever. Uh, you know, they, uh, the relevance is that we, first of all, we can keep track for the Guinness record that these, all these people painted. And uh, secondly, 50 years, 100 years from now, uh, when people come, it could be you painted on it. You were here, you painted on it. So your relatives or your, your granddaughters, your great, great granddaughter or someone could come and say, uh, I know she painted. And we're hoping that a kiosk will be there with all the names of the people who painted. So they just type in your name and it will pop up the rest of the information will pop up and then we go, yes, she did live in that city. She was that age. That's right. Yay. That's, we're trying to look to the future a little bit here too and, and uh, be accommodating to, to people after we're gone, you know, that can see this. And it's so interesting to see the various ages of everybody. The youngest person to paint was a little baby that was 12 days old in St. Genevieve. Her daddy was holding her and had the paintbrush in her hand so she could paint. And the oldest person to paint was a lady that was 97, but her birthday was the next week to turn 98. So, the, and the jobs, the various jobs, you know, bankers, farmers, lawyers, students, you know, just mm -hmm. all, all kinds of people. And yeah. Not just from here in the United States, here in Missouri, we've had people from Germany. We've had people from- uh, Italy just recently. Italy, Saudi Arabia, Africa. So that's- so, A young man from the Solomon Islands who said his grandfather was the king of, I think you call him the king, but the- the ruler of the Solomon Islands, which is amazing. <laughs> he painted on the turtle and he said he has a pet turtle at home, but it's a sea turtle. So amazing. <laughs> amazing, it sure is. Um, well, I know some of the folks probably are wanting to know if it's going to come uh, possibly to their neck of the woods, um, if it hasn't already. Uh, is there any possibility for other places to be scheduled if they help you with the gas and pay for some of the expenses for that? Yeah, this has been a, a real problem. Uh, sponsorships have been uh, very hard to come by. People don't know what this project means, and I understand that, that they, can, they can't sponsor. If they, but if they will, but, are we willing to do it again? Yeah, <laughs> if, if they will, uh, maybe. Uh, we generally don't go unless we're pretty much assured that we can get 250 or 300 people at, at an event to paint. Uh, because it's, it does take up our time. At this point in the game, we need to finish the project by June, first part of June is, is what we're thinking of because we need to get the photographer to photograph all of them. We need to get replicas made. We need to get the, the panels laminated, actually. They'll have to go to a, a local uh, sign company, Kennedy Sign Company here in Cape. They're widely known. Uh, they will be laminating them. All of that has to come together. Plus, we have to get them to the uh, Truman Building, and someone there uh, will have to engineer getting the panels on the wall. And so, it all has to happen pretty quickly. So, I I don't think we're going to be able to get very very many places at this point. If you can try us. We will see. <laughs> Uh, well, they should just know. contact you both and, and yes. you guys can see whether it can fit. And uh, Lauren just wrote in, I have to agree, Lauren gave me a chuckle there. She said, sounds like the Census Bureau should have hired the Baileys. <laughs> so <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Sam Samuel uh, wrote us, he said he has records on, a, no, this is uh, turning the tables back on over, um, to Amelia and John, but she said, he says that I have records on approximately 6,000 pre-1952 Missouri artists and artisans and will be willing to share if you'll let me know the best way to get information to you. 
So, um, yeah, Amelia, I know we, we have your all's information at the, the very end when we run credits, but if you want to type in your email address or anything for that, uh, you can go ahead and do so. Absolutely. Know. Actually, now is really, I think, a good time for us to go to some prize giveaways before we run out of time. Um, thank you all for your questions on that. Uh, so, but before we went on air today, we had a drawing of the 179 registrants who signed up for today's program, and the random name we drew is Judy Kane. So, Judy, I don't know if you're out there, but uh, regardless, we have your email address, and you're going to get some of this nice bicentennial swag. <laughs> but for those of you who uh, stuck around, you don't have to, You uh, this part of it, you do have to be present to win. We're going to have a fun pop-up quiz. And I'll ask the question and the person who submits the right answer is our winner. You just need to type your question in the Q&A uh, box as soon as you have the answer. So let me go to my, share my screen here. Okay, the question is, and be ready to type your answers, which Missouri artist painted a mural for the Missouri House of Representatives Lounge in the state capitol in 1937 titled A Social History of Missouri? Okay, we've got a tie. So Katie and Stephen, you both came in at the same time. <laughs> Congratulations. So yes, that's exactly right. It is Thomas Hart Benton, and he was commissioned in 37. He had it finished two years later in uh, and then this is more recent, a year ago, when Joan Stack, our art curator at State Historical Society, was giving uh, a lecture to some of the House member employees, staff members about the painting. So I also have Michael back on. Um, before we go, he's going to give us a quick update on a couple of new projects that are being launched by the Missouri Bicentennial. Michael, you can take it away. Actual, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, there's some really exciting things that are, are uh, launching this week, and I want to make sure you are aware of them. Um, so first up, the Missouri Community Service Commission is launching a volunteer initiative uh, to try and encourage Missourians to volunteer 200 hours uh, in their community to commemorate, of course, 200 years of statehood. Uh, it's a really exciting project. Uh, you know, so many of our things, of course, we're thinking about 200 years of history. Uh, but the Bicentennial is also this occasion to be thinking about our present and investing in our future. Um, and community service and volunteerism is one great way to do that. You can find out more information about their program at movolunteers.org. Uh, you can also access this information through the Missouri 2021 website. Um, additionally, so August 10th, 2021, that is statehood day. It's in August, it's on a Tuesday, and it's going to be hot. So we're trying to think about what are good ways that, what is something any community across this state uh, could do, all of us together, um, to celebrate the, the bicentennial. And the idea of an ice cream social came up. Uh, right, nothing brings people together like ice cream. Um, and that could be possibly, you know, partnering with an ice cream business in your community. It may mean dragging out the old hand crank uh, ice cream machine and just spending time together. But we're, we are encouraging communities to, um, to plan ice cream socials for the afternoon and evening of August 10th, 2021, and to register their events on our Missouri 2021 website so we can tell other people about them. Again, a wonderful way to sort of share and do something together across the state. We're hoping people will share their photographs with the hashtag scoops across Missouri. Um, Finally, I also want to mention the Missouri Explorers Program, which we launched this week. Um, I have been blessed to be on major, to get to travel the state, to meet so many amazing and wonderful people, and to see so many great and amazing sites. Uh, and I want to see other people do that. Uh, so the Missouri Explorers Program is a merit badge-based program, so with a set of uh, various challenges, uh, many of them involving travel, though not all of them will. Um, that encourage people to move across the state and to get to see some of our wonderful sites. Um, complete your challenge and you will earn a merit badge button. Uh, I am grateful all of our challenges are sponsored by organizations. Right now, there are, we're starting off with four, though I anticipate more will be popping up uh, really shortly. We have a uh, Route 66 challenge uh, in St. Louis, sponsored by Explorer St. Louis. Uh, they are also developing four more additional challenges that will be coming on, on board here soon. We also have a, just a general Route Missouri and Route 66 uh, challenge that is sponsored by the Lebanon and Lapid County um, Route 66 Society that takes you from St. Louis down, all the way down to Joplin. Um, <clears throat> Bell Fountain Cemetery in St. Louis is sponsoring a Missouri Cemetery Challenge to get people to move around and see some of our historic cemeteries across the state. And finally, the Highway 36 Association um, 
and is sponsoring the Way of American Genius Challenge. This moves people across Highway 36 and introduces you all kinds of, of certainly wonderful figures who have influenced not just Missouri history, but national history, uh, including Mark Twain and Walt Disney and John J. Pershing, um, and then amazing inventions. Uh, so um, Chillicothe being the home of the first, uh, where the first sliced bread machine was, was sold and operated. Uh, the Pony Express in St. Joe that, that took mail across the entire country. Um, we're hoping people will, will take advantage of this. Here are the steps for doing it. You go to the Missouri 2021 website and register as a Missouri Explorer, either as an individual or as a family or group. Uh, you'll receive your little Missouri Explorers button. Here's your first button. And then you are welcome to partake in any of the various challenges. Um, all the challenges ask you to take photographs as sort of a means of verification that you've been to the place or done anything. Uh, you'll send us those photographs so when you've completed the challenge and we will send you uh, a merit badge button to show you have completed the challenge. So we do hope you'll you'll consider it and to participating in it. I think speaking of art, I would love to have a challenge put together that moves people across the state looking at our amazing Missouri artists, uh, both past and present. Um, so we need to find ourselves a sponsor to be willing to maybe take that on. Uh, but that would be a great one. Um, <clears throat> Finally, I want to mention all of these things I've just mentioned, the Ice Cream Social and the Missouri Explorers. Uh, you will find access to those on our website under the Engage tab, um, and you'll see them listed there, and that will take you to those pages. So that is it, and I, I hope uh, you will find good ways to engage in all of these, and, and I look forward to, to seeing folks participate. Thank you, Michael, and I agree with you. We need an art crawl for sure. <laughs> Um, we do appreciate everybody for being here and a very warm thank you to our panelists for all you've done to help us experience our state through the art being created for the Bicentennial. Next month on Missouri 2021 Presents, we will feature Show Me Stories, the legends, lores, and real stories of Missourians. So mark your calendar for Tuesday, March 2nd at 11 a.m. We hope to have registration open by the end of this week. And as always, you may sign up and register by going to either Missouri2021.org, which will direct you to the online registration at shsmo.org, the website for the State Historical Society of Missouri. This program is taped and it will be on our website probably sometime next week. So let uh, be sure to let others know if they missed it and would like to see it. So we do look forward to being with you again on March 2nd for Missouri 2021 Presents. Please stay safe. Do some art or look for the art as the days start to get a little longer. And before you know it, we'll be seeing signs of spring. Take care and see you next time.